got another day ahead of us in this city of dreams. Ooh, I love this town. Love it like you might love a mother who popped you out on the steps of an orphanage once and now stops you to ask if you got a smoke for her. Every new day here means a hundred new arrivals. But only half these gods will survive a year. And that's if it's a good one. And why do these peeps come to NC? Well, to be street samurai like Morgan, Black Hand, and Waylon Boa Boa. Welcome back to another episode on Beho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. Today we take a look at one of the most anticipated games of the year, and even last year, Cyberpunk 2077. This game's release reminds me a lot of when Dragon Age Inquisition was released at the end of the console's life of the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Although an admirable job, the generation of consoles were just not up to the tech needed to play that game properly. I remember being so disappointed, not with the story or voice acting or sound, but the visuals. It was blurry, non-detailed, and it totally let me down. After screenshots of what could be with the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, I opted to just build a new PC as it was just about time. In the end, I was 10 times happier with the PC version of Dragon Age Inquisition with its great visuals and performance and still play that game today. Cyberpunk 2077 was developed and released by CD Projekt Red in late 2020. The game had many pit stops on the way before its official release and the gamers everywhere just wanted the game out. I myself wanted the best version of the game without patches on day one, so I was okay with the delays. If any company can do it, it's CD Projekt Red. Boy was I wrong. Not to say the game is bad, just very disappointing. I've been playing the game on the Xbox Series X, so the true version I'm playing is a higher performing version of the Xbox One X. The game has two modes to play in which is nice with quality or performance. There is an icon on screen that you scroll around that will show you the difference between the two selected of quality or performance and it's huge. I appreciated that up front as it helps you make your decision but in the end it's very hard to tell individuals alone. After selecting you will choose between three lifestyles your character V will actually be. That alone is like three different looks at how you will tackle the campaign for more replay value, which is good as the game is about 20 hour campaign alone to 30 to 35 hours with side missions. You can personalize your character, but won't really see your character throughout the game at all. The story is pretty much the meat of the game and the dialogue is top notch. I had no issues getting into the story at all with the companions you meet and getting into their background and story. The writing and character development is huge here as almost everyone you meet can actually be a focus on the main campaign so you've got to be careful with your decisions as each one truly makes a difference. This will lead to many different endings on how you choose and play the game. drivers when you've got a clean AI to get you from point A to B in style. And how he bags a permit to operate every year is still a mystery. Hey, Dígame, how you feeling? That was too much. I felt you could feel the guy's pain, his, his stress, his hope. Can it can't be. You'll pay twice because I say you'll pay twice. Alright, you want the flathead? I better see some eddies. Combat is your standard first-person shooter affair with action and dramatic cinematics thrown in. Hacking and stealth can be your way of play as well, but I preferred run and gun. I preferred using guns more as the kick felt wonderful, as well as many different weapons that you can choose throughout. Reminds me a bit of Borderlands, but with more force, feeling, and style.
The gameplay also offers detective work, which is also really cool, as you can hack BD memories that are like social entertainment for others that you can feel their emotions at the same time. Hacking them is fun as you will be able to look for clues and solving ways to fight before the fight. So we're good there as well. As we move to the visuals, boy do we need to take a step back. The PC version I've seen in action is beautiful and stunning. Even my mid-range PC, which is likely a slightly above the version of the Xbox One X, can do wonders with this game. On console, be prepared that it is a blurry with a lot less detail and special effects. Just like how I felt with Dragon Age Inquisition on the Xbox 360. Very disappointing knowing that the developer is capable of so much more as well as other developers getting the most out of their games on both the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. The performance itself also takes a hit on the base consoles. With a low 15 to 30 frames per second, this is better on the PS4 and the Xbox One X, but still leaves a lot to be desired. I played the game on a Series X and for the most part have no real issues in the frame rate, but cannot stand the visuals as they still look blurry and missing special effects everywhere. The cities are barren with less people with low textures and not a lot of detail to begin with leaves a lot to be expected as it feels nowhere close to the target of the trailers and screenshots from the marketing. This is where the main issue lies, as I know there will be an upgrade in 2021 for the PS5 and Series X owners, but waiting this long for it, I might just purchase the PC version and bite the cost to play the game the way it was meant to be played. Overall, if you own only the base versions of the Xbox One or PS4 consoles, the game still needs to be heavily optimized, as you will see many bugs throughout your gameplay. I would give this game a 6.5 out of 10 due to these factors and lack of consistent performance truly takes you out of an otherwise fantastic game. My playthrough, although much better on a Series X, would probably receive a 7.5 out of 10 for its vast immersive environments and fantastic missions, great characters and overall story and campaign, but it's doomed by its lack of detail blurry visuals that you can't help but feel are worse than last generation. My hope with the upgrade in 2021 is it doesn't take that long and I will revisit the Series X version of the game later on. That's it for me on this console review of Cyberpunk 2077. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Beho out and Greg take us out of here and I will see you all next upload. Don't you dare faint again. Keep your eyes open. Uh. Uh. Damn.